Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at Marxist theories of crime and deviance, examining the concept of law creation. Traditional Marxists have suggested that the ruling class use their position of power and status to control the masses, and one way this is achieved is through the ruling class's ability to create law. William Chambliss, writing in the 1970s, argued that the main purpose of law was to protect the property of the ruling class from falling into the hands of the masses, that is, the working classes. He argued that the majority of laws were concerned with protecting the ownership of property, and that these laws only came into being with the advent of capitalism and the expansion of property from being simply land to capital and goods. How can the ruling class create laws? Well, according to Marxists, the ruling class utilise their social connections with elected officials to pass laws that protect their own interests, and this is primarily the protection of their private property. This is not restricted to individuals, with many large companies using lobbyists and lobbying groups to pressurise politicians into passing laws in the interest of the ruling class. A second way that the ruling class intervenes in law is by the ownership of the free press. They use this to demonise the activities of the working class, making them appear deviant and lawless, and this necessitates laws being passed that control them, and at the same time, protecting private property. Laws also perform an ideological function for the ruling class, and this is further reason that they are involved in the creation of them. By criminalising the activities of the working class, this benefits the ruling class, as any resistance to ruling class ideology is seen as a form of deviance. The state will act on behalf of the ruling class and create laws to control trespassing, theft or copyright infringements. This ensures that the ruling class can continue to make profits out of the goods and services that they provide. Snyder argued that as part of the ideological function of law, the activities of businesses are not regulated in the same way as the behaviours of working class. And this is because the state is reluctant to pass laws that harm the interests of businesses, as they are aware that they need businesses to employ people, and high levels of unemployment don't win votes at the polling booths. Now even laws that seemingly protect the interests of the working class eventually end up benefiting capitalism. Frank Pierce, again writing in the 1970s, suggested that legislation that protected employees was actually a smokescreen, performing an ideological function of making capitalism look caring, while simultaneously protecting the owners of the business from expensive litigation. These laws, it was suggested, benefits capitalism as people believe the companies they show loyalty to care about their employees, which makes it easier to buy their products. Now there are many examples of laws that benefit the ruling classes. Whilst employees pay tax at source and at a flat rate, large businesses are able to utilise tax loopholes and avoid paying tax on their profits, as they have registered offices in tax havens such as Jersey, Switzerland and the Caribbean. An example of Snyder's argument that governments won't pass laws to the detriment of business comes from the recent refusal of government to put the recommendations of the Grenfell Tower fire into law, in part due to the cost to businesses of replacing cladding on buildings that is not flame retardant, a decision that has the potential to affect tens of thousands of people around the UK. And a final example was the long proposed Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership a trade agreement between the US and the EU, which would have allowed companies to circumvent standards on genetically modified food, and also allowed companies to sue governments if they tried to pass laws that were detrimental to their business. An example of this is Philip Morris Tobacco trying to sue the Australian government for banning logos on cigarette packaging. TTIP, as it was known, was postponed in 2016 and finally rejected by the EU nations in 2019. Of course, critics of Marxists would suggest that not all laws serve the needs of the ruling classes. Some laws are in place to create a harmonious society, such as laws against violence, theft and fraudulent activities. 
and consumer rights legislation that protect the rights of consumers. Although peers may suggest that this is a further part of the caring face of capitalism. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on Marxist theories of crime and deviance, looking at law creation. Thanks for watching.